So because you talk a lot about, you know, owning your own career, knowing exactly what you want out of life and moving in the direction that you see your life, but you essentially put everything on the back burner and you moved to Newfoundland for one of your ex-boyfriends who was a former pro hockey player and then eventually to Germany. What was that process like of putting everything in 25 years you've worked for in the back burner and then putting someone else first and what lessons did you learn in that experience? That is where I learned the most lessons in life because I kind of got to a point with dance where I'm like, nothing's really sticking for me. I had nothing going for myself. I didn't choose to have anything going for myself. I lost all motivation to do anything because I kind of could because I relied on him financially. Then I started relying on him emotionally because I had nothing going for myself. Then we went to Germany and now I'm in a place where I haven't worked in a long time. I can't work in Germany. I couldn't even hear people's conversations. So I just really, I really, really lost myself in the time of dating him because it was his life that he had to live. And he started feeling guilty for that because I had nothing going on for myself. It was so sad. I'd actually just sleep all the time. Yeah, I was doing nothing. So through that time period, I got addicted to Call of Duty. That's embarrassing. (laughs) All right. So what is your biggest takeaway? If you could go back to that time period, right? Knowing that the outcome is still the same. What do you do differently? What did you learn? Oh my gosh, I would have traveled more. You're in one of the most beautiful countries. Like I would have traveled more. I would have Um, I just sat and felt sorry for myself. I should have learned a little bit of the language, tried at least. So I hate to get it, and I really don't want to get too much into the breakup, but essentially (laughs) you're 28 years old. You break up with your boyfriend in Germany who you think you're going to marry, and now you're back at home living with your mom. Explain what that was like. I had nothing. I had no money in my bank But let me also give myself a little credit here. I worked two jobs before moving to Germany in between Newfoundland and Germany because I didn't want to just spend his money. And like I wanted to have, I worked a restaurant job. I worked for a roofing company in Edmonton, Alberta. Like I hustled to make my own money, but obviously that did not last very long being in Germany for six months. So um, yeah, so we broke up. Um, I had no home. I had no apartment. I had nowhere to live. I had no money. I had no job. I had no stability. I was so depressed that my mom and my stepdad had to I immediately flew from I was in Vancouver at the time to Phoenix to my parents place and they didn't even take me home they took me straight to a doctor because I was not okay I was heartbroken which is already such an awful feeling it's like I was going through like a grieving process of losing someone I thought was like my person um he was done with me (laughs) like no sympathy there um uh, and they took me straight to the doctor because I, I was really not well uh, mentally and had to get on something because I was not okay. So they put me on an antidepressant and also on Valium, which was not a good call because I, it literally just made me numb. So I would just, I got addicted to Valium. I was, I was actually addicted to it. I would take it. I would just wait till it kicked in so I was numb so I wouldn't feel anything I'd sleep I'd wake up and forget where I was and be like no I don't want to be here I don't want to be here I don't want to be in this position and I would take another one and I would cry myself to sleep um I remember my mom coming in in times that I was asleep with a YouTube video on of hypnotizing me with like being happy because she didn't know what else to do she would put on like videos of like you are happy like you're gonna be okay um Yeah, she would, um, her and Rob would cook for me. I couldn't eat. I was like 94 pounds, uh, like just skin and bones of a depressed mess addicted to Valium. So, okay, at 28 years old, if you had looked at your 18-year-old self (laughs) and told them you're at rock bottom, addicted to Valium, living at your mother's house with not a dollar in your name, Mm -hmm. what would your 18-year-old self said? Shame on you. Get your shit together, girlfriend. You don't but that you don't lean on other people to make yourself happy and that's what I tried to do. And I think that's such a good takeaway. So this was 6 years ago. How do you build yourself and get out of this rut? What were the steps of going from 0 to where you are now and before hit me before you actually go on the show. What do you do to get yourself standing on your own feet and get off value uh. and everything else? I knew I couldn't live in the place of depression that I was in. Like I had to turn it around. So um, I did have to wean myself off an antidepressant and the Valium because it was starting to make me sick. Like I was not okay. I don't really know how I did that. I think it was just um, a little bit of healing time. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and just getting through like the really hard stuff. And then I went back to Vancouver and my friend Mike Card, who is just a godsend in my life, he was such a good friend to me. He um, let me live in his apartment and stay on his couch. I was allowed to be depressed and sad without him being like, no, let's go. Let's get out. He allowed me to like feel my feelings. But like we would play music together. He would play guitar. He was um, he would cook and like help me study because I had to go um, get a job back at a restaurant. Start from the bottom at a restaurant. And keep in mind that I that was the last place I wanted to go back to for work. But once I started going back to to work, and started, you know, doing things for myself is when I started to turn around. And I moved back to Edmonton to help open a restaurant there. And then that's when um, Brie had me audition for the show. For the show. Yeah. So what I take away there is to get out of ruts, you need small wins. You need small to get small wins. wins. You're building momentum. You're back at work. You're making some money again. At this point, did you have, were you back on track of saying like, I'm going to apply to other reality shows. I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to be yeah. on radio. And what other shows or things were you doing other than The Bachelor to get in the game? No, I wanted to go on Big Brother so badly. So that's, um, Brie was like, why don't you send in Brie always thought I would go I could go on The Bachelor I don't know why she just had it in her brain that I could do that and um, she was like they usually pick one or two Canadians so she sent in um, she like helped me do everything and sent stuff in and so did my sister help and then um, she sent it in for Juan Pablo season but I also sent in a video for Big Brother because I wanted to go on Big Brother so badly I would love to go on Big Brother after only watching one show I would love to but Brie puts in your application for The Bachelor you're passed over for Juan Pablo season they call you again and you have a boyfriend and you are now being asked to go on Chris Soul season it was almost a year to the day that I had sent in everything. So I just figured they had completely forgotten about me. But that's when I got the phone call. So I went back. And at this point, I'm like hanging out with this one guy who is one of the best guys. He's the nicest human. He's engaged now. He's such a great human, um, Trevor. And he knew that I was going through this process of po possibly going on the show. So it wasn't like I hid it from him. And he was like, well, what are you going to do? And I'm like, clearly he wasn't my person. So I was like, well, I'm going to go. So we we had to like, like he knew. He dr he dropped me off at the airport to yeah. go to the show. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it was a consensus. You were going on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. He knew. But yeah, they called me almost a year later saying, are you still interested in coming on the show? Okay. So now you got this fresh, clean start. You get the wind is behind you. You're moving full speed. What does it look like when you finish? I will say that The Bachelor and Bachelorette, helped me really dive deep into who I was as a person and mm -hmm. what I wanted out of a relationship and out of life. And it was like free therapy every day. Yep. I completely agree with that. I felt good going into The Bachelor. Like I was like in a good place with myself. And then coming out, it was obviously hell and really hard. But I learned so much about myself. And I feel like it was such a good time for me to go through that. So coming out of it... Social media was just starting to be a thing. I would say Chris Soul's season is the first season, I think, where you could like start making a business out of social media. Mm -hmm. So I saw that as a huge opportunity to build something beyond just being on a reality show. And I remember talking to Jillian Harris, who I think I look up to in a massive way when it comes to like creating your own brand um, and business, because she was like, how can I make it so that people meet me later in life and don't say, hey, you were the bachelorette. They're like, oh, you're Jillian Harris. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, that's, I want that. Yeah. I have really good people in my life to be able to talk to about that. And people just that were really, I felt like smart in that way, but also in my corner. I basically just tried to stay extremely authentic and true to myself and stay in my lane. I turned down a lot of money after the show just to try and not only be authentic, but I wanted my um, followers, I want them to trust me because they're my number one customers and they're the people, they care enough to be following what I'm doing in my life. You know, I don't want to be selling them crap. I want to believe in what I'm sharing and I want them to trust me so that down the road I can build something bigger and better that they will always be right there with me. Now, you go in and you create this brand and you make some money and now you build your own company. So how do you actually come up with the vision of something like a wine label or an actual scrunchie line and make it a reality? What's that like? Well, you have to have a good team. You know, you get the right people in place to do what they're 
that what they excel at, um, which I'm very fortunate to have you because you help me with all the numbers and finances and mm -hmm. that kind of thing where I can be on the creative side of things. So I love wine. Everyone knows that. I always had a glass of wine on the show. It's just always been a thing. I, I've been called mean names because of it. People have loved me for it. It's like an accessory to me at this point that I have a glass of wine. <laughs> it, I built a podcast around it, but like I just have always made sure that even if it was something as silly as scrunchies, you make it about other things. You don't just make it about a scrunchie. You bring people together. You have a scrunchie gang. You have empowering women on social media sharing their stories and trading their scrunchies and a Facebook page for the podcast. And it's become like a community of women who empower each other. And that's like the biggest win for me. So we could spend, I could spend another couple hours here. I know we got to wrap up, but Caitlin, thank you so much for being uh, here with me. Before we wrap up, we're going to ask you to have two things. I want you to give any last minute thoughts or advice you have on anyone out there that's trying to find themselves, find their path and find their way. And then we're also going to play a game called restart rapid fire. So before I feel we like I'm on off the vine, before drinking wine, that, answering questions is, and playing games, this is the only drinking session we have had on restart. <laughs> and the reason that we're doing it is because we are supporting Caitlin Spade, Spade and Sparrows. I almost always have a cup of coffee in my hand, but this is the first time I've had wine. So before we uh, go into Restart Rapid Fire, do you have any last minute thoughts, insight, or words of wisdom for anyone out there? Well, I'm a big believer in who you surround yourself with and believing in yourself and that it took me a lot of like actual therapy too. I always want to put that out there that for me to get to know myself and to have confidence and to know who I am and what I want, I also went to therapy and that was huge for me for self-love and, and self-care and self-growth. Don't be afraid to talk about therapy. Don't be afraid to talk about who you are as a person deep down to your core. If you are shy, be shy. If you are outgoing, be outgoing. If you are struggling with mental illness, talk about it. Find the right group of people. As long as you're being true and authentic to yourself and going through life like that, the success will come in many forms. For someone that doesn't like to be put on the spot, I think you nailed that. I mean it. All right, let's get into Restart Rapid Fire, where people that don't know you get to know you a little bit better. So we're going to start off with the first question. You ready? First question. If there was one business you could invest in right now, what business would that be? CBD. CBD? Yeah. Oh, why? How come? Interesting. I was shocked you said that. Oh, I don't know. I feel like that's a good good thing to be a part of. It's oh. Everyone loves CBD. THC or CBD? CBD. Okay. CBD. There you have it. Is there a certain CBD company or no? No. I don't know. I even just said that. All right. That's C just what came to my mind. CBD and it's rapid it fire. So I tried to be fast. Who, what is one professional that you, what is, who is one professional you idolize? Jillian Harris. Jillian Harris. I like it. And I, know, I really do. I know you absolutely. No, Jillian Harris is amazing. What she's done is incredible. And I know you also idolize Ellen DeGeneres a lot. I mean, you talk about her success all the time. She's very positive and I think she manifests a lot of good things in her life. I love it. Okay, let's keep going. If you could be an animal for one day, what animal would you be? Bald eagle. If you were one Disney character, what Disney character would you be? Ooh, um, that brave uh, girl with the long red hair. She was like this gangster badass Disney character. Okay. Yeah. All right. If you could have one discussion with someone who is no longer here today, who would it be with? Well, either my grandpa or grandma because I feel like I should have gotten... I was so close to them, and I'm like, God, I wish I would have got to know them better. Um, other than that, Michael Jackson. Oh, that's a really good one. What... Yeah, I like the idea of having a discussion with someone where there's unsolved mysteries that yes. you can find out the answers. Okay, what is one business or area in the future you expect you'll get into that no one would know about? Maybe home decor. Hmm. Interior design, yeah. home decor. All right. And then last but not least... If you could be part of one TV sitcom family other than Friends, who would it be? DJ Tanner, Full House. I love that. DJ Tanner. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. DJ Tanner it is. She's like the glue to the family and she's also funny and like... She wears scrunchies too, doesn't she? Yeah. Who <laughs> I love it. All right, Caitlin. So if someone is interested in your rosé, your scrunchies, your podcast, your tour, where can people find you and all the things you have going on um well caitlinbristow.com is a great place to to start also my instagram is everything just under my name twitter instagram um my website everything just caitlinbristow um 
follow do edit if you're not on social media spade and sparrows and if you want to stay connected with like when the scrunchie release is basically like a newsletter but staying connected to me with a text message mm -hmm. so for tour dates scrunchie releases a new wine release everything um and just to text the number is 310-564-0187 that's beautiful. Caitlin and I both have text lines. Reach out to us. Caitlin, thank you so much thank for you. joining us, joining me. I appreciate it on this episode of Real Talk. We learned a lot about your story and there's many takeaways we can all implement into our life. So thank you for being on. Thanks for, for having me. All right. Until next time.